Hi, and welcome to A to Z for Moms podcast. Today is Parenting Perspectives on Thursday. So if this is your first time listening to the podcast or watching it on YouTube, uh, we have a weekly lineup. So it goes as follows. Motivational Monday, kick off the week with inspiration and self-help. Teaching Tuesday, homeschooling insights and educational guidance. Whip It Wednesday, where we talk about culinary adventures and cooking tips, exploring the culinary world and improving your cooking skills. Parenting Perspectives on Thursday, get advice, stories, and support for parenting. Food Storage Friday, learn about food storage and preparedness. And Money Magic for Moms on Saturday, discover entrepreneurship and ways to make money from home. My name is Jody Martin, and we are going to be discussing meaningful moments this Christmas today as far as our Thursday Parenting Perspectives podcast goes. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, anything like that, especially with the Parenting uh, Thursday podcast that you would like me to answer, anything like that, you can email me. The email is podcast at a 2 z 4 momscom and you can listen to this podcast on all your major podcast platforms as well as my website, a2z4moms.com. And if you want to view it and see facial expressions and hand expression gestures, all that fun stuff, you can also view this this podcast on my YouTube channel, a 2 z for moms like me And you can follow me on TikTok at a 2 z for moms like me So without further ado, let's get into today's podcast. So every podcast, we go over four main talking points. So with today, meaningful moments this Christmas, the four talking points we're going to go over is number one, teaching the true meaning of Christmas. Number two, navigating holiday holiday stress. And number three, balancing gift giving and values. And last, number four, creating memorable traditions. So let's Let's get started. Number one, teaching the true meaning of Christmas. This is something, you know, as a parent, the last, I would say, 10 years or so has been really vital to me as it seems the world has gotten more and more commercialized. And holy cow, I mean, they used to... It used to be the day after Thanksgiving that all, I mean, not Thanksgiving, the day after Halloween, the stores would fill up with Christmas stuff. And then now they're doing it earlier and earlier every year. Literally this year, it was just as they were get, cleaning up back to school stuff in August, they were, they were basically putting out Halloween and Christmas stuff together. I couldn't believe it. And they're just starting earlier and earlier because it's getting so commercialized. And, and and again, you look at Black Friday and how Black Friday used to, it used to start 5 a.m. on Friday and then it went back to midnight and then, and then it started, you know, eight or nine o'clock at night on Thanksgiving day and then five o'clock at Thanksgiving day. And now they're doing it. It's the whole month of November, Black Friday sales and, and Cyber Monday came around and it just, they're getting so, it's getting so commercialized. And along with that comes, where's the focus? You know, our, our focus is changing to the gifts and, and, and shopping and the deals and, and kind of the one upping your neighbor and, you know, um, beating the Joneses or, you know, keeping up with the Joneses or beating the Joneses, doing better than them. And, and in that expression, and it it really has been so hyper-focused on that. And you have Santa and just everything is so commercialized. It's interesting how many kids don't even really know the true meaning of Christmas. So <clears throat> some as a parent, teaching the true meaning of Christmas is something we've focused on with our kids. That yes, Christmas is great, presents are great, family time's great, the lights are great. All these things are wonderful things we enjoy, but that's not necessarily the true meaning of Christmas. So Re, if you want to really focus on the true meaning of Christmas, read Luke chapter two. Read the Christmas story. Um, the whole those chapter is. I don't think it's even that many verses. I was gonna look up the verses and I totally forgot. 
Um, we had a friend that their family every year in the, for the whole month of December, um, because there wasn't that many verses to the, the, the Christmas story from the time their kids were very little every night, they would rehearse they they would read all the the whole Christmas story, or, or maybe they, they might have just read one or two verses. I don't. I, I, yeah, I should have looked that up. But anyhow, the whole um, they would read that, and whether it's a few verses or the whole thing, and they would memorize it because they would read it every single night as a family. And they got to where they could just they all had it memorized. They had the Christmas story memorized, and the birth of Jesus and and everything like that. So. That's that's something, you know, it, it gives a good focus on what the true meaning is and why do we celebrate Christmas. Um, another thing is talking about the symbols. I mean, we have a lot of symbols that represent Christmas, but you, it's easy to forget what do they mean. And so I have a list here I'll, I'll share. And feel free to discuss these with your children. And, and it's fun because you can really expand on them. You can do fun activities with them, with each of these, and talk about the true meaning and, and research them more and go into more detail. So the symbols that I found um, of Christmas and what they represent, the Christmas tree, <clears throat> excuse me, the Christmas tree is a symbol of life and everlasting joy. It's often adorned with lights and ornaments symbolizing the light of Christ and the joy of the season. And, and, and I mean, there might be other things as well. These are just some of the top ones I came came across. The star represents the traditional symbol on top of the Christmas tree represents the star of Bethlehem that guided the wise men to the birthplace of Jesus. Candles symbolize the light of Christ, bringing warmth and hope. Advent candles specifically represent the four weeks leading up to Christmas. A wreath is the circular shape of the wreath represents eternity and the unending love of God. Advent wreaths often have candles, each symbolizing a different aspect of the Christmas story. The nativity scene uh, featuring the Holy Family, shepherds, wise men, and animals represent the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. Um, oh, and side note, speaking on that, if your area where you live ever does a crash festival, um, how is it spelled? C R, uh, it's spelled kind of funny. C C R E C H E, I think. Crash. Anyhow, um, it's called a crash festival, and what it is, if you ever see one of those going on, go to it. It is the neatest thing ever. It um, people bring their nativity sets. And from uh, and that's what it is. It's just a display of tons of different kinds of nativity sets, and it is so neat. I've even done I on my YouTube channel. I shared one that I went to a few years ago, and it is so neat because they're all different sizes, shapes, colors, anything. For, and they have some from different countries. People that go to different countries and get a nativity, and it is so neat just to see all these different nativities. So that would be another fun family outing you could do. Um, okay, back to the symbols. Holly and Ivy, uh, they represent ever, their evergreen plants and they symbolize ever, everlasting life. The red berries of Holly are associated with the blood of Christ. Gifts and presents, the tradition of giving and receiving gifts, is a reflection of the gifts presented to the baby Jesus by the wise men. It also represents the love and generosity of the season. Bells are associated with joy and celebration. They ring to announce the arrival of Christmas and to spread the good news. Candy canes, the shape of the candy cane is often associated with the shepherd's crook, symbolizing Christ as the good shepherd. The colors red and white represent the blood and purity of Jesus. Mistletoe is a symbol of love and friendship. The tradition of kissing under the mistletoe is believed to bring good luck and love. Snowflakes symbolize purity and the uniqueness of each individual. In a Christmas context, they evoke the festive and wintry atmosphere. Poinsettias are the red and green colors of the poinsettia are associated with the birth of Christ. The shape of the flower is said to resemble the star of Bethlehem. So those are some, some of the most common Christmas symbols and what they mean, what they represent. Um, and like I said, you can go into more detail and find out more information on those. But that's kind of fun to teach your kids what the, the true meanings of these symbols that they see are. 
Um, some other things that you can do teaching the true meaning of Christ is watch movies or shows with that teach the true meaning. So um, some of my favorites, obviously the nativity story, there's, there's some options out there for that. Um, the Chosen, that TV series actually has an amazing one. The, the Chosen series is just amazing by itself. Anyway, if you, if you want to watch and learn more about the life of Christ, it is an amazing show. We, we really enjoy it as a family. Um, Charlie Brown Christmas Peanuts, so that they do a really cute, uh, Christmas one about the nativity and all that. It's, it's really sweet. Um, and then there's some, there's some more, um, what would I word, uh, secular, I guess, shows, but still have a good meaning. Like, it's a wonderful life. It, it talks about the importance of what, what the world would be like without him. If you've never seen that, I know it seems kind of odd because it's, it's a uh, black and white and actually, it's a black and white or might be color. Anyhow, it's older movie. And, but those good, good feelings and good, that true meaning of Christmas. Um, all right, so number one, teaching the true, true meaning of Christmas. Hopefully that's given you some really good ideas. Number two, navigating holiday stress. Boy, isn't that a doozy. I mean, that holidays can be super, super stressful. So here's some, here's some ways that I have learned over the years to navigate holiday stress. Um, first of all, lists are your friend. I'm a list maker anyway, by just by my nature. I love to make lists. And so I can cross them off and know kind of these things are done, these things are left to be done. And um, so make a list, make a list of people you wanna get gifts for, or make a list of the people you're buying a gift for and what gift you're getting them for, whether you're buying it or making it or whatever. Um, if you're doing goodie plates, uh, who are you gonna give goodie plates to? Make a list of what type of goodies you're gonna make. Uh, cards, are you sending Christmas cards? Make a list, who are you sending Christmas cards to? Are you going to parties, to Christmas parties? Make your list of, these are the Christmas parties we're doing. So, like I said, lists are your friend. List will be there for you this, this season. Make your list and check it twice, like Santa, you know, anyhow. Um, also, setting a budget. It's easy to go overboard at Christmas, especially with all the impulse buys and the sales and, and all that. But if you give yourself a budget to work with, it kind of takes some of the stress and the pressure off of, and, and again, when you have your list of the gifts, it's easy to know, okay, we're getting this, this child, these gifts. And when you got them, you're like, okay, hey, done. We're done. We don't need to get any more for that child. So having your budget, it, it really helps actually with, with relieving stress. Um, so there's some DIY budget friendly shopping because again, spending a lot of money can be stressful. So shop the sales, shop, shop those sales when they happen that whether it's the Black Friday, Cyber Monday, which have already happened now, but there, there'll be some good Christmas sales. Another great thing is, is BOGO, buy one, get one. Um, they're around Christmas time. They do a lot of gift cards that are, you know, buy a $50 gift card, get a 10 or $20 gift card free. Those are great because you can, you can use those smaller gift cards. The ones that you get free, those, that's more gifts you can give to, to someone else. And, um, or if it, you know, it's, it's buy one, get one of, of anything. That's basically you're getting two gifts for the price of one. Also DIY gifts, do it yourself. Um, Pinterest. Oh my goodness. I love Pinterest. And there's so many great ideas on Pinterest. Now, if you're not a crafty person or something, then, then that's totally understandable. There's, there's some pretty easy things you can do, even if it comes to printing something off and putting it in a frame. That's, that's a really cheap DIY gift idea that you can do. There's a lot of neat stuff out there that you can make your own gifts with. Um, in fact, I have, it is still one of my favorite things, my favorite Christmas decorations, a friend of mine gave me years ago. She literally just printed it off her computer, but it was a saying and it said, wise men still seek him. And I can't, I can't remember if it has a little silhouette of the three wise men or something like that. And she just put it in a small, like five by seven frame. It was probably a frame from the dollar store. But it was, it's like still, it's still one of my favorite Christmas decorations. It was so simple and literally cost her a dollar. Um, 
but it is it's just there's some really fun and easy cheap gift ideas you don't have to break the bank for and that takes a lot of stress off that as well planning ahead so start planning early avoid to avoid the last minute stress uh, create a schedule for tasks such as shopping decorating and meal preparation I do this a lot um, I actually shop for Christmas gifts and things months sometimes even all year long and just set set them aside so that it's not any last minute stuff and you, you it just takes that pressure off um, and then having your list as far as like we do a lot of goodie plates for our neighbors so we plan out we're gonna make certain goodies each day or each week and so you're not doing everything all at once at the last minute but you can you have the ones that you can freeze or the ones that are you know shelf stable or, or whatever that can wait versus the ones that are perishable or maybe take up a lot of space or your pans they have to sit in the pans or whatever and you're gonna need those pans you can plan things out like that and that takes a lot of stress off as well setting realistic expectations so recognize not everything has to be perfect set some realistic expectations for yourself and for others and understand that it's okay if everything doesn't go exactly as planned it's okay it's gonna be okay um, how many times as parents do we do we stress and worry and buy this expensive gift for our child and then they end up being so excited about the wrapping paper or the box I mean I think every parent has had that situation where you buy it's usually with the toddlers you're you're buying this amazing cool gift and then they end up playing with the box <laughs> you're like oh my gosh I could have got a box for free um, also delegate tasks delegate some tasks share responsibility with others delegate tasks such as cooking decorating or cleaning to family members or friends to lighten the load uh, especially if you have kids let the kids decorate the tree the tree doesn't have to look perfect let them decorate the tree let them help teach them how to do the the Christmas cooking and it's going to create those memories with them as well um, let them like I said everything doesn't have to be perfect and that's okay let that let them work side by side with you and you're gonna build those memories as well as have the help doing it and and teach them one year and they can do it in future years uh, say no when necessary learn to say no to additional commitments if your schedules already full it's okay to prioritize self-care and avoid over committing Focus on meaningful activities. So identify the most meaningful traditions and activities for your family. Prioritize those that bring joy and skip activities that feel more like obligations. Um, that That's okay. It's, it's okay to pick and choose and go to and attend and do those activities that serve you and your family for what you guys desire. Practice self-care. Uh, take time for yourself amid the holiday hustle. Whether it's a quiet moment with a book, a walk, a bubble bath, self-care is crucial for managing stress. Pay attention to your physical and mental well-being. So make sure you're getting enough sleep, eat well, engage in activities that bring you joy, meditate, all that stuff. Make sure that you're also taking time for yourself. That's going to help w lower your stress levels altogether. And sometimes I find when I get like just overwhelmed or stressed, sometimes that's what is missing is like I just need a little bit of self-care I need me time I need a nap I need a hot bath I need to meditate I need to you know just focus on something even if it's for 15 minutes of just okay close out let's shut out all the outside ideas and resources and and clutter and chaos and just let's just go internal and relax and regroup and that's that makes a difference um, also embrace the simplicity of the season it's okay to scale back on elaborate decorations elaborate meals it, it lets go of a lot of the stress uh, limit screen time reduce exposure to holiday stressors by limiting on uh, time on social media and other screens comparison can contribute to stress and taking breaks from technology can be refreshing comparison is the thief of joy and sometimes when you're on social media it's it's that whole you're comparing everybody's front room to your back room if you've never heard that saying before 
it's basically, you know, in a house, you have your front room. Everybody does their front room. It's what people first see when they come in the house. And it's all perfectly clean and organized and nice and fancy and, and just looks amazing. But it's the back bedroom. That's where everything gets thrown for later because nobody sees it. Nobody ever goes there but you, your family. And so it gets to be the messy, the class, the last priority, right? You never, you never really take time to clean it, to organize it, to give it the same attention as that front room because everybody else, everybody sees the front room. And a lot of times, like on social media and stuff, people only share that front room. They only share the best. They share what's perfect in their life. They want that, that representation and that picture of happiness and success and, and they want to show that. And that may or may not be reality. I know a lot of people who represent themselves one way when I know darn well their reality is quite different. And, and that's just from people that I know. And so you kind of have to take that with a grain of salt for everybody online. And maybe some people, their life is that perfect and their back room is just as amazing as their front room. But the thing is, comparing your worst flaws and your back room to somebody's front room is not an equal comparison. And so sometimes you just have to step away from those influences and, and that's usually social media. Focus on gratitude. Take time to reflect on what you're grateful for. Practicing gratitude can shift your focus away from stressors. We talked about this last week. Um, so go back and you can listen to our Teaching Gratitude podcast for last week. It's all on teaching gratitude. And learning to let go. So just accepting not everything's going to go as planned. That's okay. Sometimes letting go of control can lead to unexpected joys. Just enjoy the ride. Take it for what it is and and just be there in the moment. Um, I think as moms, so many times we miss out on the joy because we're so focused on behind the scenes. And it, it's very reminiscent. It, it reminds me a lot of the story with Martha and Mary, with Jesus, where you have Martha's rushing around and, and working and, and worried about the meal and cleaning the house and stuff, and Mary's sitting at the feet of Jesus. And, you know, which, which do we want to be like? Do we want to be that person that's stressing ourselves out because everything's got to be amazing, everything's got to be perfect, everything's got to get done right now? Or are we there in the moment? Are we present and enjoying this time with our children and our family and our friends? And it's okay that it's not perfect because we're in the moment. All right. So we've talked about teaching the true meaning of Christmas and navigating holiday stress. Now we're going to talk about number three, balancing gift giving and values. So I'll tell you a story um, about, oh goodness, it's been 11 years. Holy cow, I can't realize it's been, I can't believe it's been that long. 11 years ago, we had, my husband and I, at the time we only had five kids, and we wanted to try something different. Again, this this whole idea of of teaching our the true meaning of Christmas to our kids was important to us. And we decided that we wanted we had heard this idea before and we wanted to try it where you only give or the kids only receive three gifts. So what we did was we told the kids they could receive one, one, they could ask Santa for one thing. That was their want. They had one want. And then they got one gift that was cl any clothing items they need. And that, and I mean, we put them all in one box. So it, in that very, that was based on their needs. If they needed underwear and socks, that's what they got. If they needed shirts or jeans or a winter coat or whatever, whatever they needed, clothing item went in one box. So they got one want from Santa a need from mom and dad and then we did one spiritual gift from mom and dad so they had those three gifts and we also did um, which we've done as a tradition in our family where the children they they get a gift for one of their siblings and we we just started one year everybody did the person younger than them and the next year it was the next person down so it was easy to, to keep track of who they had and rather than drawing names every year and and stuff that way they it just kind of rotated with the year and whoever they had the year before, they could it, they could tell easily who they had that year. So so they did it, and then we put a ten dollar cap on the sibling gift, 
And so they got, and, and San, so Santa would come and he would give them one gift and fill their stockings. And then they'd get one gift for, for and from, they'd give and receive one gift from, uh, or with siblings, if that makes sense. And then they'd get one need and one spiritual gift. So because we were doing it that way, um, the Santa gifts were, were a little bit nicer. And rather than having uh, this bounteous, all these random gifts, they, they were getting one nice gift. And it was, I think like they got a tablet or, you know, something, something a little nicer. Well, um, we waited about six months after Christmas. Oh, and we try also that year, we tried doing as many things at ourselves as possible, making homemade. We did all homemade decorations on the tree that year, just for fun. Um, so we did like strung up the cranberry and popcorn, which that's actually, the cranberry gets super sticky. We did the craisins and it, it's a sticky mess, but it was fun and it looked really pretty once it was done. Um, but we made clay ornaments and let the kids roll out the clay and, and you know, and, and cut them and then put holes in them and we did the ribbons. Those were really fun. They were just really heavy. <laughs> so FYI on those. But we had fun. We we made a bunch of homemade ornaments. And and um, for their spiritual gift, what did we do that first year? Um, I remember Addie was a baby and I sewed her. I We tried to do as much homemade as possible. Um... I sewed her a quiet book for church and she still has that now, but, um, I can't remember what we did for the other kids, but anyhow, we asked them, uh, about six months later in June, we're like, so what did you guys think about Christmas? And they unanimously, all of them were like, oh my gosh, it was the best Christmas ever. And we weren't expecting that. We were kind of expecting them to be like, oh, well, we only got three gifts, you know, so, uh, you know, but it, they didn't. They were like, it was the best Christmas ever. And we started realizing, you know, because they were so overwhelmed with so many gifts, it was like they appreciated what they had more. They weren't pushing most of their gifts aside to play with one or two random ones and, and having to rotate them or whatever, get bored with them. They, they only really had one gift to focus on, one toy. And um, they loved it. And so we were just like sold. And and we've done that ever since. Um, we did add a couple of years ago, and we don't always do this, but sometimes we'll do a book as well. So we'll do one gift from Santa, one clothing gift, one spiritual gift, and one book. And the, the book, like I said, sometimes we do the book, sometimes we don't. But um, it has been amazing, and I cannot tell you how, how wonderful. And that, you talk about relieving stress. Oh my gosh, it's been great. Because you, you basically, as a parent, you've got these three gifts. It's like three gifts per kid. And once you get those, you're done. You are done. Check that kid off the list. And, you know, once everybody's done, you're done shopping. You're done. And it is the best feeling ever. Um, so that was something we started doing and we, and we also associated when we were doing the three gifts, we associated it like from the three wise men. Oh, that was another, <laughs> I kind of skipped over that part. Sorry. We talked about that was a gift from three wise men. You had gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So those three gifts were also kind of a, a need and want a spiritual. So, um, let me think, see if I can remember it. The gold was the need because the, it helped provide for worldly needs and, and finances and stuff. Um, the frankincense was a want. I think it was, it was like a luxury item. And the myrrh was a spiritual, it was part of a spiritual, the part of the, like a burial ceremony. And it was more of a spiritual, um, it was used for spiritual purposes, or maybe I've mixed, I might have swapped frankincense and myrrh. Maybe it's the opposite. Anyhow, the three gifts were like that. So we would talk about that. And that's why we started the three gift thing. And we we're like it, this, we're going to just like the wise men, three gifts, you're going to receive three gifts. And, uh, so again, it brings back to that true meaning of Christmas. Um, some other ways of balancing gift giving and values is gifts for others. Focus focus on what they give versus what they get. We talk about probably two to three times 
more often than what do you want for Christmas, we talk about what are you, what would you like to get so and so because they they do the sibling gift. What do you think we should get so and so, or you know what what would so and so like? We talk about that two three times more. We do ask like what would you like for Christmas? You know what would you like to ask Santa for or whatever, but um, we're focusing way more on what they're giving rather than what they're receiving. And, and not only that, but we give to more people than they end up receiving, whether it's neighbor goodie plates or, or um, grandma and grandpas and, you know, things like that, that we, we end up giving gifts to different ones more than the three gifts they receive. And so again, it's that, that focus on giving. Uh, another thing we do is Secret Santa. So we let, we actually do this year round and my kids love it where you just take cookies, goodie, you can even take a box of cake mix and some frosting. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And you take it to someone's house, leave it on their doorstep, knock and run away. My kids are ninjas at this. They are so good because we've done it so much and they have so much fun with it. And I'll block, I'll, I'll park a block down with my lights off and they'll all run up together and it's been such a fun tradition. Like I said, we do it year round. We'll do, we'll do the goodies and, and secret, secret goodie drop offs. And, and, um, but again, that, that's, that's a fun gift giving focus. Um, handmade gifts, handmade gifts are something we focus on a lot. And we, we try to express the, the quality and, uh, you know, cause we've talked about like, you know, every, everybody's gotten that gift from a little child or something where it's like a little piece of paper that they've colored or something. You're like, Oh, thanks. And you're not sure what you're going to do with it. And, and, and it's sweet because they put so much time and effort and they're giving what they have. And that's why I, I've always been one to help my little children when they're young and well, and all my kids, I'll help them. We'll, we'll look on Pinterest together. And I, I'll offer to help him. We'll, we'll talk about ideas and we'll be like, yeah, let's make him something they're going to want to keep for a long time because it's awesome, you know? And, and so, um, so anyhow, we, uh, homemade gifts, we've done a lot of things over the years and Pinterest is great for that. Um, for some ideas and things. We usually their sibling gift. I, I encourage them to uh, make as much homemade as possible. So like, um, one year my, well, my son it, it is funny cause this has come up recently, but we got a board and we mod he, he had his brother and, um, one of my sons had his, my other son, another son, we got a board and he, we printed out, he was all into video games and Legos. So we printed out this patterned wallpaper logo, video game logo background, printed it off on a couple pieces of paper. And then we did Mod Podge onto the board. And then we found this Lego strips of, um, it's like a Lego sticker, but it was kind of like foamy a little bit. And we did that around the edge of the board, and then we had enough to write his name out of that Lego stuff, the, the older son's name. So he had this board, and then we made it so he could hang it on the wall. We put the little hanger things on the back. And it was this custom thing uh, made out of stuff that he loved, and it was great. Um, so things like that. Talking again, needs versus wants is, is another thing. Quality over quantity, giving the gift of quality time. That's, that's another one. Spending quality time together as a family, um, handwritten notes and cards. A lot of times that's stuff that especially like grandparents and things just absolutely love and, and just taking the time to write a handwritten note, whether it's a thank you card or a Christmas card or just a I love you card, taking that time to hand write a note is, is showing how much you care and, and love someone and um, helping them focus on that gift giving and, and the value of the true value of things. Um, and this is, this is all stuff that's going to last. This is memories that last forever. It's not just a toy that's going to break and a year later they don't have or whatever it is. Um, all right. So we've talked about teaching the true meaning of Christmas. Number two, navigating holiday stress. Number three, balancing gift giving and values. 
Now we're going to talk about creating memorable traditions. Um, so in our family, focusing on the goal of meaningful Christmas, we have created a lot of memorable traditions. And sometimes, you know, you start a tradition and sometimes it sticks and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> sometimes you realize it's really not worth as much work as you put into it or it just didn't resonate with your family or your kids. And that's fine. That's fine. Um, some of the things that we do in our family, so about, uh, wow, it's been about 15, 16 years ago because I only had four kids at the time. I had, I found these stockings at the dollar store and they're huge. They're like three feet tall, huge, huge stockings. So I purchased one for each member of the family and wrote the names across the top in with like puffy paint, you know, and we hang, and this is the tradition we started and we've done it ever since. We hang them on the wall in our, in this house, we hang them in the hallway and we call them our love stockings. And what we do is they go up with our Christmas decorations. And so usually by the 1st of December, if not right after Thanksgiving, and all month long, we put love notes in them. So it could be something like simple as, I, uh, I love you, or thank you for making my bed for me, or you're the best, you're the best husband ever, or you look so pretty today, or you know, whatever, things like that. Um, thank you for always holding the door open for me. Little love notes. And um, occasionally we'll put a little treat in there. We did learn that we can't put too many things inside that are heavy or they come off, they fall off the hooks because we use the command hooks. So they can only hold so much weight. But um, we put all these, these just sweet notes of how much we love each other and, and are grateful for each other. And throughout the month, just random things. Or sometimes we do random jokes like, told you, told you I, I do the dishes or I don't know, just some inside jokes that we have. And, um, and, and, and we just put that in the stocking. Well, then we, we opened those stockings, those big ones on Christmas Eve. And that's one of our family traditions. And so we all go through our little love notes and tell each other, thank you and how much we love each other. And it's just, it's been something fun that we look forward to. Um, we also do, uh, one, we have one family Christmas Eve gift. It, we, this just all goes in one box because again, minimal presents under the tree and, and, and boxes and stuff. Um, every, our Christmas Eve box will always have new pajamas for everybody and usually a little treat inside that we can have. And sometimes it'll have a movie or a game that we can play or watch together as a family Christmas Eve. It'll have like hot chocolate, maybe microwave popcorn. Um, and then it'll have, sometimes we, we've been doing the last three or four years is a saran wrap ball. Uh, if you've never heard of those, they're pretty fun. You just get little, little tchotchkes and gift cards or, things from the dollar store, candies or whatever, and you wrap them in saran wrap and you keep wrapping them on top. So it's, they're, they're wrapped in layers of saran wrap. So it ends up being this ball, like the size of a bowling ball. And we have gloves <laughs> and a big dice and we all sit in a circle and you roll the dice. And if they get a six or a one, then they can start peeling away at that ball and they have to put the gloves on and then peel away at the ball and anything they can unwrap, they get to keep. And meanwhile, everybody else is still rolling the dice. So if somebody else gets a six or one, they get the ball and they get the gloves and, and they get to start unwrapping. And it's a lot of fun. It's just a fun Christmas Eve thing that we started doing. Um, just a, a fun thing together. So, um, We've, we've talked about how we take goodies to, to neighbors and uh, both in secret and just from our family. Those are some memorable traditions. Some other ideas you can do is feeding the poor, going and helping. Um, if there's a homeless shelter where you live, going and serving Christmas dinner, um, doing secret Santa, donating clothes and toys. So one tradition I've seen, which we haven't done, but I, I loved it. It sounds so cool was they fill a garbage bag full of clothes or toys or maybe one of each and they stick it under the Christmas tree and when Santa comes to bring their gifts, he takes those garbage bags to give to less fortunate kids or other kids in need. And so he, Santa's recycling that. And I thought that was, 
that was a really cool uh, tradition. I, I like that idea. Um, advent calendars. So I love advent calendars. I love them. So we have one that we do every year that's got candy in it and we do, we call it kid of the day. And sometimes we'll do one or two pieces of candy. So sometimes when we had six kids, we would do two kids every day. Um, and what it was was just the kid who was the biggest helper or really did their chores well or did something they were so sweet or so kind or or just so well behaved whatever it was they were kid of the day and usually our kids were pretty unanimous of because we would talk as a family who do you think dad and I always uh, the dad <laughs> my husband and I we always got final say on who the kid of the day was but everybody would have input and they'd be like oh I think Addie should have kid of the day because she helped so-and-so with the dishes or whatever and so kid of the day they'd go and they get the treat for that day um, we also have a spiritual advent uh, well spiritual but family quality time I should say bonding where it, it has a piece of paper in each day and it'll say something like as a family talk about your favorite Christmas movie and it, and it'll have or it'll be like sing your favorite everybody sing your favorite Christmas song or or you know little things like that it'll have these things to do together as a family and it's just to create that family bonding and quality time together um so another idea you can do is going caroling. So caroling is a great memorable tradition, uh, something fun, and a lot of people really enjoy the, the caroling and and it, it's fun for them to go and, and sing. It's just caroling is a classic tradition. It, it's fun. Driving around just to see the lights. Drive around as a family to see the Christmas lights on houses. Um, take some hot chocolate. Get everybody a little traveling mug with hot cocoa and and um, and and sip your hot cocoa in the car while you drive around and look at Christmas lights. <clears throat> so you want to remember when you're creating memorable traditions, focus on the love languages. You have the five love languages, right? There's words of affirmation physical touch, um, gifts, quality time, and acts of service. So kind words to each other, uh, share, you know, having those, those things where you're complimenting, you're talking about what you love about each other. Those, that's that words of affirmation, 20 second hugs, or we also do in our, our little thing that has a slip of paper the, of something we discuss or do as a family every night. One of them is, and one of my daughter just remind me today, actually, she's, one of them was um, doing a, a massage train where you get in a circle and everybody massages the shoulders of the person in front of you. And then you can turn around and do the other direction too. Um, that, again, would be your physical touch. Gift exchange, that's your gifts. Your family movie night or game night, that's your quality time. Going, going to look at Christmas lights, going caroling, all that, that's your quality time. Service is serving each other, acts of service. Finding ways that you can do things for not only each other, but other people. The, the neighbor goodies, dropping them off and run. That, those are acts of service. And so touch you. there's a way you can touch base on each of these love languages for your family. Because chances are your, your kids are going to have different love languages. So if you're touching on all of them in some way over the season, they're all going to feel that love. And um, that's that's the true meaning of Christmas, right? Is, is the love. Um, so... We've talked about teaching the true meaning of Christmas, navigating holiday stress, balancing gift giving and values, and creating memorable traditions. I hope today's podcast on meaningful moments this Christmas gave you some great ideas and uh, inspired you to find some ways to make it a wonderful holiday season for you and your family. And like I said, uh, if you have any questions, suggestions, need more clarification, anything like that, feel free to email me podcast at a to z for moms.com. And um, you can always go on and, and look at my, my website. We'll have a lot of resources and things on there. Uh, you can, the a to z for moms.com, or if you're looking for some holiday recipes this season, you can go to my what ate eight. Dot com. It's what, the number eight, 
A-T-E dot com, so like what eight people ate. Um, that, that site is all on food and recipes. The A to Z for moms is more general for moms like me. And again, you can watch the show on YouTube, my YouTube channel, A to Z for moms like me. You can follow me on TikTok, A to Z for moms like me. And uh, thanks for listening, and I hope you have just a wonderful day and an amazing weekend coming up. We'll see you next time.